So when you actually now supplement um, beta mananis, you are targeting those beta mananis we just said they cause a lot of problems. And once you break them down, you actually make them, uh, you know, I would say neutralize them from causing those problems. For example, we will therefore then see more nutrients be digested and energy. And number two, you will see this uh, negative effect of immune, actually we call it feed-induced immune response go down because this only happens when you have intact manans. But if you break them in small fragments, they are not able to affect these kind of uh, changes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes or less. Uh, my name is Sam Rochel, co-host of this show and associate professor of uh, poultry nutrition here at Auburn University. And today I'm joined by uh, a, a very prolific researcher in our area, uh, Dr. Elijah Chiari, uh, is professor of monogastric nutrition and a holder of the McIntosh family professorship in poultry nutrition at the University of Guelph, uh, previously trained at University of Manitoba, so a long career in Canada. And before his academic career, uh, he was a uh, innovation scientist for a global feed additive uh, company, which is going to have relevance today as we're talking about uh, you know innovative technologies and feed additives. So, uh, Professor Chiari, uh, really excited to talk with you and then learn about the, these areas, which I know you're your uh, high level of expertise in. So, thank you for joining today. Okay, thank you, Sam, for having me today. Uh, as Sam said, we will discuss um, bitter manans. But uh, before we get to the you know to the talk, I just want to say that uh, uh, everywhere I have had privilege of visiting with farmers and researchers in Asia, Africa, North North America, and uh, the message is always the same: they want more from feed. Uh, and uh, when you talk of feed, um, you know, uh, when I look at survey, we are producing probably 1.3 billion metric ton of feed in a annual basis. Uh, and if you add up those and start looking at uh, where are those feed being uh, produced and for what species of animals, you'll find that more than 70% of that feed is produced for pottery and pigs is what we call monogastric animals. And uh, now if you actually drill deeper into that and ask yourself what make up this feed for these animals, uh, you will find that um, roughly 30% is, uh, is uh, soybean meal. Uh, on a global basis, uh, we have probably 300 million metric ton of soybean meal going to make feeds for these animals. And um, if you actually now put that into perspective, uh, you will find that um, uh, soybean meal, one of many anti-nutritional factors in soybean meal is uh, fiber. But the fiber in soybean meal is unique in some way that uh, it's, it's, it's not the same as the kind of fiber we have in the cereal grains. Uh, this soy fiber has a component called bitamanans. And this bitamanans, uh, to be frank, is um, a very important anti nutritional factor. Uh, number one, if you will, um, it's one of the most uh, traded anti nutritional factors in, uh, in, on a global basis. The reason why I say this is that uh, if you look at soybean meal, it's a very important feed ingredient in poultry and swine feed. But only three countries produce enough to export. And these countries are is US and Argentina and Brazil. And if you actually look at 1.3 billion tons of feed produced, 60% or more of that is produced in countries which don't produce soybean seed. So that means uh, then this is the most uh, extensively treated uh, anti-nutritional factor. Now, why is bitter manans unique? Um, bitter manans are unique uh, in animal nutrition for many two reasons. Number one, as we know very well, monogastric animals, they don't have ability to digest fiber. 
So we consider fiber, fiber anti-nutritional because then it negatively affects the digestion process and absorption process of nutrients. Uh, specifically, something like fiber or encapsulate the nutrients, uh, such as proteins, uh, starch, and fats. And uh, if it actually forms that uh, capsule, the enzymes uh, which these animals produce to digest those nutrients cannot access them. Another way they affect nutrient digestion is through uh, what we call viscosity, which affects basically how the enzyme work in the gut and how the nutrients are absorbed. Uh, a unique uh, aspect of bitter manans is the fact that they do also elicit some immune response in the gut. Uh, you see the gut is right in the mucosa, there are some receptors for manus. And uh, when these intact manas go to the gut, the gut confuses them as an evading pathogen. And therefore, what it does is, you know, activate the immune system. Now, activating the immune system, as many uh, researchers tell us, is a very costly process because the animal then is forced to divert the nutrients and resources for growth uh, to fight off this pathogen or invasion which has uh, come about. So, so that's why I say manas are unique fiber because you actually don't see this immune kind of response from other fiber types like from the cereal grains. Uh, and that makes us uh, think and uh, that's why I've been trying to look at the role of, uh, you know, how do these bitter manas affect, first of all, the feed efficiency from feed digestion perspective and also from the health perspective. Uh, or metabolic uh, perspective of uh, these animals. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, BASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high-quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. Absolutely. No, I, I agree. I think it's very unique in that way. And, and we know that a lot of the fibers can can indirectly impact, you know, the gut health through how they, they impact the, the microbiome, for, for example. But like with the manins, we know that there's there's a direct recognition by the host of, of these compounds. So, you know, with that, what what is the role of, I mean, obviously, beta meninase has, has been a technology that's been explored for a few years. I mean, how, how can that help in degrading and, and what are the ultimate benefits of this? Yeah, obviously, I, I do appreciate the enzyme technology. Uh, the enzyme technology has really changed the feed industry. and There's still a lot of, uh, you know, potential to harness this technology uh, to close the gap. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, in terms of these animals' ability to digest what we feed them. Now, uh, specifically going to bitter mananis, uh, my lab has completed at least two uh, uh, detailed reviews on bitter mananis. Uh, in one review, we looked at uh, how they influence uh, the calorie, uh, you know, release in the feed ingredients and feed diets. And the other one, we actually looked at uh, how they, you know, influence the health of broilers and uh, pigs in general. Um, so one thing they do is that when you have bitter man, you know, enzyme is a science. Uh, application of enzyme in feed is a science because enzyme actually target specific substrate in the feed ingredients. So when you actually now supplement um, bitter mananis, you are targeting those bitter manas we just said they cause a lot of problems. And once you break them down, you actually make them, uh, you know, I would say neutralize them from causing those problems. For example, we will therefore then see more nutrients be digested and energy. And number two, you will see this uh, negative effect of immune, actually we call it feed-induced immune response, go down because this only happens when you have intact manans. But if you break them in small fragments, they are not able to affect this kind of uh, changes. Uh, another advantage of that, um, you, you mentioned a little briefly uh, some on microbiota effect, and this is also an area I'm very passionate about. Uh, when you break down this fiber, uh, you release the nutrients uh, and you also make that fiber less um, reactive to the gut. What actually is produced a fragment of fiber which are actually more fermentable? 
And we have demonstrated that those fibers will actually change microbial activity, the microbiome in the, in the, in the gut for the benefit of the host. And number one uh, is uh, we have uh, pathogens, which uh, basically pathogens generally like a, a, a gut pH, which are a little bit higher. Uh, so when you actually have more of, the, of these fragments which are fermentable, the more they are fermented, the less the, uh, the pH in the gut. And that basically control most pathogens, uh, E. coli, E. toco, Salmonella, Cosidium, Pafligen, all those. Uh, another advantage of actually breaking them down is the fact that uh, you surface some energy because some of these short-chain fatty acids produce, the chicken or pig can actually use them as a source of energy. You talk of acetic acid and uh, uh, a butyric acid, which can also be produced from this process, uh, as you know very well, is a very important um, you know, uh, food for the intestinal cells, so actually strengthen the intestinal cell. So by breaking down manas, you see so many benefits uh, for the animal. Number one is nutritional. Number two is the health, or you call it immune response, and of course metabolism, because obviously when you remove the stress created by having intact manas, then you have more of the nutrients which are absorbed, going more for growth, and actually also reduce the metabolic stress of trying to fight off uh, uh, the, the negative effect of intact mana. Yeah. Exactly. No, I really appreciate that, that approach because, <clears throat> I mean, with enzymes, this is often, and really any feed additive technology, uh, but particularly with enzymes, you know, it's a little bit easier, still can be tricky, but it's easier to quantify the impacts on the nutritional aspects. We can, you know, put a, put a number to the calories or the amino acids or whatever. What's yeah. more difficult is, you know, what are those secondary effects on, on changing that, that are reducing that barrier energetic cost of, of the inflammation and those things. But if we can show that on the front end from the nutritional perspective, then it makes it easier for the end user to incorporate those technologies and then get those secondary benefits too. So, Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, I guess we, we also have to start looking at the way we use feed enzyme beyond the metrics and caloric value because uh, some of these benefits you get, you're not going to see it at the formulation stage of your ration. Uh, the farmer will see it from when they look at the overall performance uh, from feed to, to the meat or whatever product they sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your insight on this, Dr. Chiari. I know you have a, a lot of uh, a lot of expertise in this area, a lot of experience in this area. So uh, thank you for this work. And we look forward to continue to see what your lab, uh, how, how it moves the needle uh, going forward on this. So we really appreciate it. Yeah, Sam, thanks for the opportunity to share. And I really want to acknowledge many of our supporters and most importantly, uh, the students who get work done and uh, whom we train every tool, uh, they are going to spread the gospel out there when they start working. Uh, we really appreciate that opportunity. And uh, we also want to thank University of Guelph uh, for this opportunity to be able to train the next generation of uh, industry leaders uh, and also an opportunity to do work with the companies like BSF. Yeah, same, same here. I echo the same appreciation for for all those who support the work and all those that, that do the work. So, this, so thank you for uh, giving that acknowledgement. And uh, again, thank, thanks for your time. And uh, thank you for all who, who listened today and joined us. If you enjoyed the show, just uh, like and subscribe so you can catch the next one on, on your favorite podcast. And in the meantime, uh, I'll be uh, signing out on this episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Thank you all.